Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. I think the praise team had a pretty good time. Amen. Worshiping God. When we get to come in here and practice, everybody's like, and sometimes it's rough on me, but man, once I get here and I, we begin to worship God, man, just things change, atmosphere changes. It's just it's just a wonderful thing to, to be in the presence of God. And uh, there's nothing else that will ever satisfy like Jesus will. Amen. Uh, their world, they, they can offer what they want to. They can try to... Uh, to sell the best that they got. You know, they, they say that Coca-Cola is the real thing. No, Jesus is the real thing. Amen. Jesus is the real thing, except no substitute. Amen. Uh, for Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Tonight, I just want to give God praise and glory for what He's done in our church and what He's continuing to do, what He's done in my life and where He's brought me from. I, You know, that, that song, The Way, I, I heard it one day on the radio and I told Jamie, I said, listen to this song and Man, He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to the Father, Brother Gillis, except through Him. And I believe that tonight, amen. And you can't believe, if you don't believe that tonight, amen, you'll not enter in. You have to believe that He is the way, the truth, and the life. And you can't come into the Father except by Him. and Except you receive Christ as your Savior, amen. And He's the door, He's the gate, He's the way in. He's, there ain't no ladder, there ain't no wind that you can climb up. No matter what the world tells you, you can be a good person. There'll be a lot of good people in hell tonight, amen. Or uh, There'll be a, good, a lot of good people that miss heaven because uh, they, they didn't accept Christ as their Savior. I know a lot of people that are good. and They donate to this or that or the other thing and they give their time. And they, they do this or that, and uh, uh, but they haven't accepted Christ as their Savior. They'll, they'll not get in. He is the way. Amen, the truth and the life tonight, except uh, no substitute, no lie, amen, of the devil that he would try to manipulate or uh, say to you tonight that, that, you know, well, there's some other way, you've got plenty of time, young people, listen, uh, time is short, Micah preached this morning that even he's convinced that this won't be long before uh, Christ's return, amen, and so uh, we know that when our old men dream dreams and our young men see visions, amen, that, that the time is at hand, and uh, you know, I know that David has seen heaven. Uh, God has revealed him uh, to him. He's in my bedroom at 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, crying his eyes out, saying that God allowed him to see heaven. And, man, it was just a, a phenomenal. I don't wake up for nothing. I lived right next to the railroad tracks for 20 years. I'm talking about 20 feet from the railroad. <clears throat> I could sleep through a hurricane. I'd never even know it was around. But that woke me up when he came into my bedroom that night. And <clears throat> so... I know that God is the soon coming King and He is on His way. He's closer now, amen, today than He's ever been, amen. Uh, He could come get us before we get out of here tonight, amen. Uh, If you would, let's stand. I'll go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank You, God, for this day, Lord, this time that You've given us to come together as a body. God of believers, God, that we thank You, Lord, tonight, God, for Your presence that we've already felt here, God, through Your through the praise and worship, God, and you said you'd inhabit our praises, God, tonight. Uh, we thank you for your habitation, God, in this place. And, Father, thank you for what you're uh, going to do tonight, God, and what you're in the process of right now, God. And we just give you the praise and the glory for all things. And the people of God said, yeah. Amen. Amen. As I begin to, you may be seated as I begin to, to study this message, Gillis, uh, or I'm sorry, Bill, this morning. He started touching on it in Sunday school. Micah come in there hitting on me yesterday about uh, what he was reading in Revelation 4. And I tried to give him a helping hand. And God had been speaking to me in Revelation 2. Amen. About uh, uh, saying that he had somewhat against us that we left our first love. Amen. And that's the scripture I'm going to take. I'm going to jump around a little bit. I'll start there in Revelation 2. But then I'm going to back up and I'm going to go to Hebrews 2. And do a parallel of what God is talking to us about tonight. Amen. And to the church of Ephesus, he said unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, Write these things, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience. Church, he knows your works. He knows your labors, and he knows your patience tonight. Amen. He sees all, he knows all. 
And thou, how thou canst not fear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. Amen. That you've done the right things. Amen. You've followed the guidelines, and that everything has come out and hast borne, in verse 3, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou has left thy first love. And God says He has somewhat against the church tonight, amen, that we've forgotten. We've, we're more into ministry, we're more into this or that, and we've forgotten, amen, the Savior of our souls, amen, the one that saved us, the one that delivered us, the one that brought us out of the pit of sin that we were in, Brother Gillis, we can get tangled up in other things, amen. They may not be worldly things, they can be churchy things, amen. Uh, too concerned about churchy things sometimes, and not enough mindset on heavenly things and what God has in store, but not getting in the mindset of what God wants us to be doing, amen, and, and, and sitting and taking a back seat and letting somebody else do it, or letting uh, a brother so-and-so take this part or do that. When God has called you, amen, to do what He has called you to do, amen, and, and there's no, and the gift and the callings of God they're without repentance did you know that God's called you to do something you passing the buck off the Bible says not me not the preacher the Bible says the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance so if you're not doing what God has called you to do then you're doing the exact opposite of what the will of God is and we can't be blessed in our life if we're going against the grain. You ever try to get out in the rapids and swim upstream them salmon? I see them salmon making that migration. And man, it's, I'm like, man, how do they ever, ever get back up those streams? They come to those great big waterfalls. They come to those great big waterfalls, Gillis, and they're swimming and, and they, they'll pitch their body up, on their, up in there just as far as they can go. And they'll land and get shoved right back down. They're going against, they so many church people that's going against the grain and jumping, trying to do their own thing and getting pushed right back down and they're being defeated in their state and they're getting discouraged and they're getting beat down and the devil's sitting there the whole time. See, I told you, see, I, we got to get rid of the devil like Bill talked about this morning. The Sunday school, get him off our shoulder. Quit letting him beat us down, amen. Get right in the will of God, amen. Get where God has called us to be as a church, as individuals, as Christians. As the children of God. Amen. Amen. Get right where we're supposed to be. I, I, you know, I done something this morning to Ivy that, you know, may not be any bearing on, uh, what, uh, you guys look at or whatever, but I stand up here singing and she was getting a little ruly this morning, unruly, and I grabbed her, one of her flags, she had two, I grabbed one of them and I said, you need to go back there and sit with Granny now. And she moseyed back there. And she sat back there for a minute. She swapped out flags with her. And I watched her. And she turned right around after a few minutes and she comes slipping back up the pew, the aisle, with that one flag. And when she got about where Gillis was at, she looked at me. And I looked at her and I went like that. And she went, whoo, whoo, and right back to her pew. She got right back in the will of what Daddy wanted. We got to get right back in the will of what God wants, our Father, our Heavenly Father, what Daddy wants us to do. If we're wrong, and we know we're wrong, we're looking, going, well, God, now, now I know, I know you'll understand. You'll let, no, God don't understand. Why does everybody use that as an excuse? I hear that so many times that God understands. God understands one thing that He sent His only begotten Son to this earth, to be born, uh, to be made flesh, amen, and to come and die on the cross from our, for our sins so that we might live, amen, and that He suffered that great punishment so that we could have life, amen. That's what He understands. Amen. That's what He understands. Is that He sent Jesus to the cross. Jesus could have, if anybody ever could have had an excuse, Jesus could have had an excuse. I could see me. I'll use myself for an example of trying to go through what Jesus went through. I wouldn't have, I would be scarce to say that I wouldn't have made it through the first part to where they were calling for me to be crucified. I mean, hey, wait a minute, don't listen to them. I'd have been trying to bargain my way out of it. Hey, wait a minute now, whoa. Let's think about this. I ain't done nothing. You done said I ain't done nothing. Now come on, Jesus, he didn't do that. 
Us in our flesh, uh, me, I know for a fact. I've been, I've been like, there's got to be another way. Jesus prayed in the garden, Lord, if this cup may pass from me. He said, but not my will, but thy will be done. That's what we have to understand in our life. It's not our will, but His will to be done in our life. We have to be submissive. We have to, to give in to that. We have to be the same. If you're a Christian, we're to be Christ-like. So Christ was our, was our example. So when we start making excuses about how God understands, no, God don't understand. We, we have to live our life holy and acceptable unto Him. Amen. Walk in righteousness. Walk in holiness. Amen. Walk in truth. Amen. In our life. I'll run a parallel in Hebrews 2. And it's talking about our salvation. Therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. We ought to listen a little better to the things that we've heard. Well, he ain't preaching to me tonight. He's not talking to me. I ain't really got to pay attention. I'll just sit over here and do this or that. I'm guilty of it. I've done the same thing. Sit right there in the pew. Well, he's not. A, I told you, I've showed you my scars. I was so mad at Marcus at one time. About the first four years he was here, there was four weeks I sat back there in the fourth pew. Wouldn't even look at him while he was in the pulpit preaching. Because he's preaching truth and I didn't like it. Because I knew I, my life wasn't where it needed to be. That I needed some things to be corrected. And I, well, I'm not even going to look at him. I'm so mad at him. But I was wrong. And he was right. It wasn't the messenger. It was the messenger. Amen. It, was what, it wasn't what Marcus, Marcus well, it wasn't coming from him. That was coming from God. We have to heed ourselves to what we hear. We may not like what we hear. But listen, you can't live any way you want to and make it to heaven. In Him is no darkness at all. How do you think you're going to get into heaven with sin in your life? You ain't. We, we have to have our hearts purified, have our minds clear. Uh, you know, for unforgiveness is a big one. Because a lot of times we just say, well, we'll just forget about them people. When we need to truly, in, in all reality, we need to go to them people and ask them to forgive us. <coughs> Excuse me. We need to go to those people, not forget them, not push them back. We can't have unforgiveness in our heart. But that's an easy one, Gillis, for people to hide because we can just forget about people and not just not be around where they're at and not have to worry about them and be able just to let it go and just, I don't have to come face to face with them, I don't have to worry about it. But listen, if you have all against your brother, the Bible says we're to go to them, not forget about them and ask them to forgive us. And once you've done that, you're in the clear. If they don't accept it or they don't receive it, that's up to them. But you have to do, hold up your end of the bargain. You have to do what God has called you to do. He says, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, least at any time we should let them slip. I don't know about you guys, but my mind is a pretty slippery thing. Amen. It, it can slip from time to time and me forget pretty easy. Amen. I, I have instances where, I mean, it's just, I mean, just gone. I, I used to, when, when I was in my, you know, I'm, I'm just 40. I'm not that old. I'm, I feel older than that, but I'm not that old. Uh, but just 40. But uh, I remember a time in my early 30s, late 20s, man, that my mind was like a steel trap. I could remember numbers, man. I, and numbers, I've always been good with numbers. I could tell you, like where I worked at, I could part numbers, fitting numbers uh, of a million hydraulic fittings. I could, I mean, I'd done my job. I could tell you the numbers. Uh, you know, they would come up to me and hold a part up in front of my face and be like, what's this part number? And I could tell them what it was, and they'd go back and verify it in the computer and say, yeah, he's right, that's what it is. And they'd be like, that's what we need. And they'd go on from me. Now, I was, I could remember numbers that good. I have a hard time remembering my birthday now. My own birthday, much less anybody else's. Now, my telephone numbers, I, 
I, I don't remember. I can remember some telephone numbers, some telephone numbers I can't remember. I don't, you know, uh, but it says that.